Due to overwhelming demand from you guys, we are giving you a Griddler video. Who are you? Welcome to Crocs in the Kitchen. I'm Jessica. And I'm Brian. Are you? Yes, I am Brian. Yes, I know I look different. I got a haircut and a shaved. There you go. Uh, but two videos ago, you guys uh, basically demanded, you know, do the Griddler demo, do the Griddler demo. <laughs> and so, you know, we're, we're bringing you the Griddler demo. It's like, why not? Let's do it. Yeah, we've been doing what's called a Mary's Mini for the past 18 days. This is actually the 18th and final day of our Mary's Mini. And um, if you don't know what a Mary's Mini is, we'll put some links down below. But basically what it equates to is we've been eating a ton of potatoes. Tons. So we've been eating hash browns all the time. And Every morning. the only way we've cooked them during this whole 18 day process is with the Griddler. Yep. Um, we did an oil-free hash brown throwdown. Yes, we did. Uh, what, a few, I don't know, a while ago. And that's when we discovered that this thing is a workhorse when it comes to grilling your hash browns to perfection. Yep. And so not only did we find out that it g made really good hash browns, we also discovered that it made some really good other things yes. as well. So stay tuned for those. Yes. But I figured let's just jump right in and show these people what this bad boy can do. This is our 5-in-1 Griddler by Cuisinart. As you can see, it has these great grill plates on here that are perfect for any kind of panini press, and that's why this little part of the machine actually does rotate. Makes it a lot easier to grill things that are thicker than hash browns, actually. Also, you can easily swap the plates for the griddle plates, which is primarily what we will be using today to make our hash browns and vegetables. And the cool part of this machine is that it actually will lay flat and you can use it as a flat grill or flat griddle. Here are the three knobs of the griddler. You see it has a selector with the griddle on the left and the grill panini on the right. If you select grill panini, you will have to use the temperature controls on the right that say grill panini. And if you happen to select griddle, you will have to use the temperature controls on the left for griddle. But the griddle is primarily used for when you have it laying flat. Now let's start with our hash browns. Set your griddler to grill panini and set the temperature to sear. After that we will get our potatoes ready. We are using Mr. Dell's all natural shredded hash browns because they only contain one ingredient, potatoes. If you can't find anything like this, just go ahead and use whatever kind of potatoes that you can find that have the least amount of ingredients, but specifically no oil. Jessica wanted to be real precise in this measurement. We are using 350 grams of potatoes or four cups. And uh, now let's get to our seasoning. We are using two teaspoons of chili powder, a half teaspoon of garlic and onion powder, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. As always, you can adjust any of these seasonings to your taste. After that, we're gonna mix it up. If you let your potatoes sit for just a little bit out in the air, they will warm up, thaw just a tiny, tiny bit, and the seasoning will stick to it. After that, we will add our hash browns to the griddler and spread them out into an even layer. We cooked these for five minutes on sear and then lowered the temperature to high and cooked it for an additional 15 minutes. Cooking times will vary if you have a different kind of grill press or panini press. Just uh, experiment with your machine and find out what works for you. Also, if you want to make these a little bit crispier, you can just let them cook for a little bit longer on sear, let them cook a little bit longer on high. You can adjust. This machine is very forgiving when it comes to cooking this. As you can see, our hash browns actually did stick a little bit here. Uh, that will sometimes just naturally happen. But if you actually do let it cook for the recommended amount of time, it will come off very easily and very nicely, and sometimes it won't stick at all. After that, cleanup for this thing is a breeze. Just use a wet paper towel and use it on the griddler while it is still hot. It'll just wipe right off. Be careful though, we like to use tongs with this because if you don't, you will burn yourself very badly. 
Another thing we like to make are our smashed vegetables. Set your griddler to high and then place an even layer of raw vegetables onto the griddler. We aren't using any kind of seasoning on these, they just turn out great as is anyway. So go ahead and press down on the lid of the griddler for about 30 seconds. In total, we'll be cooking this about 10 minutes and uh, you will want to press down every couple of minutes or so just to make sure that the vegetables get nice and smashed. They sort of steam and grill at the same time. Watch out for that steam though, you will burn your hands if you keep your hands over the griddler lid, which I just did here. After about 10 minutes, your vegetables will look roughly about like this. After that, we have another mess to clean up. So here is cleaning method number two. Take a wet paper towel and just throw it on there and shut the lid for a little while and the steam will help release any of the stuff that is attached to the griddler plates. Also, while we're doing this, I can tell you, do not wash your griddler plates with soap and water. Uh, I find that these things work a lot better when they sort of are seasoned and have the ability to release the food a lot better if they've got a little bit of stuff on them. Kind of like an old cast iron skillet. It just works better that way. After that, I let the plates cool and then swapped them for the grill plates so we can make our grilled red onions, which is one of Jessica's favorite things that I make on the griddler. Set it to sear, let it heat up, and then go ahead and place your onions directly onto the grill plates. I used a mandolin to slice these so they are all evenly the exact same size, so they all get nice grill marks on them like this. But these weren't done cooking, so I put it back down and let them cook for an additional five minutes, and they turned out absolutely perfect. They are grilled on the outside, they are soft on the inside, they are still sweet, and as you can see, I didn't put anything on these. There is no salt, there is no seasoning, and they come out just great. After that, you can go ahead and break them apart, or you can keep them whole if you wanna use them for uh, whatever particular reason you wanna use them for. We decided to break them apart though, just so we can mix them in with our hash browns and stuff. After that, plate them up however you like. So I know it probably looked like that took a long time. In reality, it didn't. I actually swapped everything out and, uh, and had everything ready to go in a very short period of time, like give them like 30 some odd minutes or so. I mean, it really does get the job done and it gets it done very quickly. This, this is a phenomenal machine and I'm, I'm kind of annoyed that we, uh, we neglected it uh, for yeah, so long in we our got marriage. It, we actually got it as a wedding present. Um, we got married almost eight years ago. And I mean, we haven't really used it a ton. I think when we first got it, we made pancakes a couple times, that yeah. kind of stuff. But uh, paninis, actually the reason I originally got it was because, or put it on our registry is because I wanted to make paninis. Um, and so have I have we ever made a panini on we've this? We've made a couple. Of I don't paninis. recall ever we've making a panini on it. A few paninis over the years, but then when we did the hash brown um, challenge, we were amazed at how good it worked, and so we were like, "Hey, let's throw some other stuff on there." And yep. Before and I so, knew it, Brian was just throwing veggies and onions and all kinds of stuff on there. Yes. Yeah, so this is. Uh, well, it may not be a typical plate with all of the onion on there. We do like to put the onions normally on top of things, yeah. but this is, is exactly the kind of stuff that we've been making over the last couple of weeks, and I love this stuff. But we're okay, gonna do a taste so test for you anyway. Hash browns first? Do you wanna do the hash browns first, since I cooked them first? Yeah. Let's go for it. So, nice and on the exterior. They're good yeah, and they cooked. Yeah, get, they get pretty crispy on the top and the outside, but then they're still mm -hmm. kind of soft in the middle, which I, mm -hmm. I like the combo. Mm. Also, you know I really love my mm. spice mixtures. And that chili powder is just so nice with these potatoes. You can adjust the uh, you know salt or any of the other seasonings to your taste. Mm -hmm. If you think it's too much chili powder, scale it back a bit. If you want more salt, add more salt. But it's just such a great technique to actually cook these. Yeah, make sure you check out the blog post that we link in the description below because I'll have all of the ratios of ingredients that Brian uses in his hash brown recipe. Yep, 
but this is exactly what I've been making for the last couple of weeks. Yeah, uh, this is, we've been getting sick of a lot of the different potato dishes. And this, this. Is, this is one of them that I could still, like we're on day 18 and I'm just, I'm going in for a second bite. So mm -hmm. <laughs> that tells you something. Just good hash browns all around. Also, as I said before, you can adjust the cooking times to suit however you want it. If you want it to be super crispy, then you can cook it a bit longer at a lower temperature. Or uh, if you want it exactly like this, you just cook it exactly the way I cooked it. It's fine, you can adjust it. This thing is very multifaceted and, and really, really useful. But go ahead and try the veggies now, the Jessica. The veggies have been one of my favorite. I I don't know why. I just love how I love the little I love the flatness of them. Like yeah, they just look really cool when you flatten them. Like I don't they they it just makes it more fun to eat your veggies. Mm. Mm -hmm. Also, when the broccoli gets good and browned like that, mm -hmm. that's when you know that it's really good. Mmm. We also like to do zucchini. Oh yeah, zucchini and, and like squash. Yellow summer squash. Also, one of the other things that we didn't show you because we can't eat it right now, uh, since the uh, the hash brown throwdown, is we've been making tofu on here. Yeah. So uh, what I've done before is that instead of like chopping up into the fine dice like I did for the Italian tofu, I cut them into basically steaks and then grilled them on there. And they get those grill marks on there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna try some of the red onion. Mmm. Nothing on that whatsoever. Awesome. It's sweet, mm -hmm. got good texture to it. All around, that is a perfectly good grilled red onion. It's got just like that caramelization to mm -hmm. it. And nothing, um, Brian, no oil. you made these actually first when we did the, um, the loaded baked potatoes. Yep, and, and you were shocked. I was shocked. I was like, what did you add to these? Did you like put a balsamic glaze or something? I don't know, uh, something. Nothing. That's a good idea though. They seem just like they've been glazed or something, but, but yeah. there's nothing else do, there. If you, when you do a bit of the onion though, and a bit yeah, of the hash brown. Yeah, that's my favorite. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I totally did this a couple of times. One of the fun ones that I did though, is that I grilled the onions and then uh, put them in the middle of the hash brown when I was cooking it. Hmm. Put some nutritional yeast on top and a little bit of mustard and then folded it in on itself like a giant burrito. Oh I didn't God. eat it like a burrito but it was so good because it had all of those flavors just inside of it. Oh, it was, it was amazing. Here's the thing. If you don't need one of these, this is totally, no. this is totally one of those appliances that, you know, it's, it took us this long, it took us almost eight years to start using it. So don't just go run out and buy one just because you saw us using it and it looks shiny and cool. Like if you think that you would do this and your it would make your your you know everyday cooking more simple and just you know you want to try some of these things out you can get them I think they're actually they last I checked on Amazon they were pretty cheap I'll put a link below um, but they definitely like you know if if you think you're gonna get use out of it get it but it, don't get it just to have some other clunky appliance sitting around your kitchen like yeah. Trust us, we have so many, it's like ridiculous. I mean, it, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> but I know, uh, I know one of you out there commented saying that you had this uh, for your RV. This oh. is like a fantastic yeah. thing to have on an RV because it's small, but you can utilize it in a bunch of different ways. The simple fact that you can have it lay flat is, is really amazing to yeah, me. Yeah, that's a good idea. But I think that, uh, you know, really, this, this is all spoken for itself. This is a fantastic product. Yeah. And, uh, and as I stated before, we are not endorsed by this, uh, by, no. by uh, Cuisinart at all. We, you, we just really love the Griddler, especially yeah. now after we've gone And everybody it. has just been so intrigued by it and, yeah. how, and the technique. And I think a lot of you have tried at home and your hash browns are sticking and that. So try following Brian's tips. He's done this a jillion times. Yeah. Um, and just see, you know, don't give up. And it, it definitely, the key is always to just yeah, let it. Sometimes you just gotta let it cook. Let it keep cooking before you lift the lid up because otherwise it's gonna stick. <laughs> yeah, and even if it sticks a little, it's not gonna stick that much. Yeah, it's you not can gonna get be it like, off with a spatula. It's not gonna be like one of those pans where it's just like burned to the bottom yeah. and you can't get it off. <laughs> it will come off with some with a light, you know, use of a, a spatula of some yeah. kind. It's a, it's great. It's a non-stick product and it the sticks The only issue I'm having right now is, so we've had it on our counter back there like for the last couple of weeks because we've been using it so much. But we don't really have like 
the counter space to leave it out all the time. So I'm kind of sad that we're going to have to put it away because that's when I feel like they go into the territory of, oh, yeah. of you just you put it away and then you never get it out. Yep. So, so yeah, maybe we'll have to do some rearranging and, and make sure we can leave it out. Yep. Well, I think that's it for this video. Jessica, where can they find us? Um, you can find us on social media. Uh, all the links are below. You can come say hi on Instagram. We're really active on there. Um, we're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're on Pinterest. We're on everything. Yep. Um, so yeah, check out the links below. And you can also check out our website, crocsinthekitchen.com for mm -hmm. more. Also, as I have stated in every video, if you have not subscribed, please do so. Uh, you can click the subscribe button down below and click that bell that is right next to it so you get all of the notifications for whenever we post a new video. Yeah. Also, please do that cool stuff. Like this video, share this video, and uh, you know, let's, let's keep growing our little community that we've got right now. And uh, you, you know, trust us, we're gonna keep putting out content for you guys uh, just because we love doing this. But thank you all to those who commented asking for the Griddler demo. We do appreciate it. The interactions are amazing. But I think that's all I got now. That's all she's got. We will see you next time on Crocs in the Kitchen. Bye-bye.